reading a book. <laughs> Be right with you. My next guest is a best-selling author. His latest book, Lost at Sea, is in stores now. Please welcome the great John Ronson, everybody. John. Lovely to see you again. Greg. I like your jacket. Thank you. I thought I'd go for <coughs> Tweedy so people might think I'm authoritative. I think people <laughs> think you're authoritative because you're a published best-selling author. People yeah. are impressed by Sometimes that. Sometimes you need a bit of Tweed just to rub it in. <laughs> you rub Tweed a lot then? Yeah. <laughs> I think your glasses will do that a little well, bit. Well, your glasses are quite kind of, I'm very, very clever. <laughs> <laughs> And you are quite clever. Quite clever. <clears throat> yeah, I know you are. Yeah. Are you all right, then? I'm OK. Uh, that's good. I've been saying I... this thing about cats, and I can't stop saying it, and uh, I think, yeah. like, I've annoyed a lot of people, and I didn't mean to do it. You do that all the I can time. Right. <laughs> Annoy people. <coughs> well, when you write things, you write very controversial things sometimes, and people get very angry at you. Well, I, I try and be nice to everybody, <coughs> though. I know people sometimes accuse me wrongly of, like, looking down my nose at, at, at sort of irrational. I, I, I think no, I... No, I don't think you do that. No, I don't no. do that. No, you don't. You're like me, right? We, we see the world, we see the craziness of the world, and we don't think ourselves as being better than those people. Well, don't we judge, don't as, judge. Yeah, we are all, everyone's a big, massive craziness. <laughs> That's well, I think that's uh, solved all the problems yeah. then, hasn't it? What's this one about? Because I haven't read it yet. I've read everything you have written up until yeah. this point. This is, a, this is a collection of adventure stories that I've done over the years. Adventure stories? Pirates? Yeah. Gypsies? Well, uh, superheroes. Uh, Real-life superheroes. I, I, I spent some time with Phoenix Jones, the real-life superhero. A real-life superhero? Do you not know about Phoenix Jones? No. Oh, he's amazing. OK, he dresses up in a super suit of his own making. There's a guy up in Hollywood Boulevard does that. Oh, OK, but... <laughs> But Phoenix is actually like a real-life awesome superhero because he goes out into the night in Seattle and fights crime. So I went on patrol with him. and uh, He fights crime? He's like a vigilante? He's like, he's like a vigilante. That's illegal. I know, it's terrible. <laughs> um, the worst thing is he, he loves fighting crime so much that when he doesn't see any crime to fight, he gets very frustrated. And, and <laughs> So, like, I was on patrol. I was on clearly sounds like a bit of a lunatic, if you don't mind me <laughs> saying so. He got so frustrated when I was on patrol with him that, like, because there was, like, no crime to thwart anywhere. Right. He decided what he should do is get a hotel room. It was him and his two superhero cohorts, Pitch Black and Ghost. Get a hotel... Wait, 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 wait. Pitch Black and Ghost? Pitch Black, Ghost and Phoenix, yeah. All right. They've all got their masks and their superhero suits. They were going to get a hotel room... Yes. Phone up some prostitutes. Yes. And then when they arrived... Arrest them. No, no, ask them if they needed help escaping the web of prostitution. But I thought this was like a terrible idea, because if you're yeah, a prostitute... It is a terrible idea, You turn yeah. up in a hotel room and you see three men in masks, you're not going to think superheroes? No, no, you're not. Um, so I went... So I talked them out of that. In the yeah, end, we I... broke up a gang of um, crack, armed crack dealers. Must Broke up a gang of armed crack dealers? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You know I am approaching the story with <laughs> some scepticism, so hold your applause. <laughs> Where are the police involved? But, no, three o'clock in the morning in Belltown in Seattle. Right. No police anywhere. Phoenix was so annoyed that there was, like, you know, no crime to thwart. Uh, he decided to break up a gang of armed crack dealers. I had no idea that this is what we, where we were heading to. Um, turn the corner, like... 15 armed crack dealers looking at three superheroes and me and my cardigan and my t-shirt going, <laughs> what the... What's that coming I go? <laughs> Are you doing coming here in your stupid costumes? This may be fun and games for you, but it's not fun and games for us. Right. So I was... Obviously... And then they saw the error of their ways and disbanded their crack gang? Is that no. What... <laughs> they said, if you don't get off our block, we're going to show you what the burner do. And I thought, like... A burner? Well, I thought from The Wire, a burner was a stolen mobile phone, but that didn't sound contextually right. <laughs> so, um... Anyway, it turns... I said to Phoenix, what's a burner? And he went, it's a gun. A gun? Yeah. And then they all walked towards us. What I was doing was, like, nodding ostentatiously in agreement with everything the crack dealers were saying. And the yeah, that's, that's exactly the technique <laughs> I use when interviewing Regis Philbin. Right. It's exactly the same. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyway, they came towards us and, and they said, look, if you're stupid enough to be, you know, standing here and willing to die for this, I guess we're going to have to go home. So they all went home. <laughs> yeah, no, look, I, I, it's a lovely story. Uh, I, I suspect that when they saw you'd left, they yeah. decided to resume their crack career. Right. Well, Still, it's a good story, though, and yeah, it's a, yeah. you collect odd people a bit, don't you? Well, I do, I do, I do. I feel very alive when I'm doing these stories, even though I'm not the, you know, the, the um, adrenaline seeker. I think uh, you're a bit of an adrenaline seeker. I think I'm going looking for crack <laughs> gangs at late at night is... <laughs> Um, yeah. you, you moved to New York, is that true? Yeah. You moved from London to New York? Yeah. Uh, How, what do you think? I like it. It's all right. Uh, I'm got... sensing hesitation. <laughs> we were on holiday to New York, so I said to my wife, um, your childhood crush. Yes, that's right. Yeah, you're married to Elaine Patterson, you that's bastard. Right. I know. Yeah. Who, um, <laughs> went to the same school as, as Craig, and Craig fancied her, and I married her. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Really? Really? Shut up! <laughs> so I said to her, you know, we were like walking down Fifth Avenue, like it was Christmas, and I said, we should move to New York. Let's, let's move to New York. <laughs> and then we got home to London, and Elaine, I saw Elaine, she was like on, the, on Google looking up schools in New York. And so I you said, moved? I said, what are you doing? She said, we should move to New York. I said, we're not going to move to New York. Are you nuts? <laughs> so I was aghast. Anyway. Aghast? Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you moved to New York. Well, and how is it then? Well, uh, do you want me to be completely honest? I would like you to be completely honest. And I want to know what you think about this. Right. I think Britain is more willing to accept and forgive failure than America. <laughs> he didn't uh -oh. ask you. <laughs> but I'm glad of it. Um, um, you think Britain is more willing to... Forgive failure than the United States. Well, certainly New York City. I disagree. Do you I think that? Britain likes failure because it doesn't make them feel bad about themselves. Americans uh -huh. see failure and they say, well, you're going to be trying again then, obviously, aren't you? That's how Americans see failure. They don't see it at all. They just see it as part of the process and move forward to success. That's what Americans do. Sacre bleu! <laughs> 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 I admire your jingoism, Dave. <laughs> I feel bad that I've just come on your show and dissed New York, you know, which is obviously... A... You did it. This you is... didn't. No, no, you know, you came on and we had some discourse about the rights and wrongs and the ups and downs of the way things are. Mm -hmm. It's OK. It's America. We do that here. Yeah, there is much, there is much to love, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. And there's... You know what? I'm not blind to there are problems here. There absolutely are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to, you know... <laughs> Move in a bit first, though. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, um. <laughs> I've got some Canadian money okay. uh, here. That's illegal right. now in Canada. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, they've banned the penny. Okay. Yeah, yeah, these are Canadian pennies. These are like crack. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Did you just burp? Right no, you no, did. I didn't. you did. I did not. You did. You just burped. You what? went uh, uh, like that. No, I just I o oh, I oversighed. It was an oversight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Have you ever have I you was, ever oversight oversight in your pants? Yeah. I have. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking big thoughts about stop and frisk, and I let out a profound sigh. <laughs> that's that's. Throw it the commercial break then. Go. On. <laughs> yeah. John Rodson, everybody, we were right back. In all seriousness, cats are lovely and are friends, and they should be treated well. <laughs> that did it, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was good. <laughs> no, I, look, I just, you know, just so as you know, I mean, I'm in no way advocating... I'm not saying that. No, cats... I should cats, just let it go. Just yeah, let, let it go, go, man. Just walk away. 
You know, Walk away. you know what would help? What? If you let out a little profound sigh. <laughs> Feel better? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. I think I'm authoritative. I think people think you're authoritative because you're a published best-selling author. People yeah. are impressed by Sometimes that. Sometimes you need a bit of tweed just to rub it in. <laughs> you rub tweed a lot then? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think your glasses will do that a little well, bit as well. Your glasses are quite kind of, I'm very, very clever. <laughs> and you are quite clever. Quite clever. <clears throat> yeah, I know you are. Yeah. Are you all right, then? I'm OK. Uh, that's good. I've been saying I... this thing about cats, and I can't stop saying it, and uh, I think, uh... like, I've annoyed a lot of people, and I didn't mean to do it. You do that all the time. Hi, caramba. <sighs> <laughs> My next guest is a best-selling author. His latest book, Lost at Sea, is in stores now. Please welcome the great John Ronson, everybody. John. <laughs> Reading a book. <laughs> Be right with you. Lovely to see you again. Greg, I like your jacket. Thank you. I thought I'd go for Tweedy so people might 